Welcome to Flavor of the Week, brought to you in part by Bandito's Mexican Restaurant, fresh made daily. Bishop Kevin C. Rhodes joins us for a special mashup between the Kyle Hyman Show and his show, Truth in Charity with Bishop Rhodes, which is celebrating its 100th episode. Well, welcome to Truth and Charity with Bishop Rhodes. I am Kyle Hyman here with our good bishop, and we are celebrating the 100th episode of Truth and Charity. Thought when we do that, let's let's have a little bit of fun. Let's play some clips. Let's share some highlights. Uh, but also thought maybe this would be an opportunity to do something a little bit different uh, on my morning show, the Kyle Hyman Show. Every Monday at 7.15, I sit down with a priest and we, we record four episodes at a time. And it usually involves some kind of food or drink, and we call it Flavor of the Week. And we get to know our priests that way, have a little fun, have a little something that's tasty while discussing their ministry and their vocation story. Thought maybe we could do a little mashup here where we'll do a flavor of the week with you, Bishop, for Truth and Charity. Wow, that sounds fun. Food seems to be an ongoing <laughs> current in all your shows, Kyle. Hey, feasting is part of the Catholic <laughs> tradition, so and Jesus was always pulling out food and, and having a dinner with people, so true. why not? We we're trying to think of what we should do, and the first thing was olives that came to mind. But we have we've done olives. We've done a little olive taste testing in the past. So then we we're thinking, well, what else has Bishop talked about? We've done Italian food, but in the episode where we did, would you rather? One of the questions was pancakes or waffles. All right, would you rather have pancakes or waffles? Oh, I love them both, but I'd have to say waffles. Okay. Do you, what do you put on your waffles? Syrup. No peanut butter or whipped cream or any No, I mean, I like to get them with some kind of, sometimes fruit topping. Strawberries? Strawberries, blueberries probably yeah. would be my favorite. Blueberries, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or waffles or pancakes with blueberries inside. Inside, uh-huh. yeah. that's really good. Uh, pecans? Pecans are good, uh-huh. yep, yep. No, <laughs> you know what? I don't get breakfast much, so... Like if I'm on vacation or, you know, with my family or whatever, when we go out for breakfast, it's a real treat, you know, to get, you know, pancakes or waffles and eggs or French toast, whatever it is. I mean, other than eggs, all of those are basically dessert for breakfast. That's right. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So thought we could have a little dessert for breakfast today. Uh, And so our first course, we've got four different things to try. So our first one, Miriam's bringing in here. Waffles. With blueberry topping. So, oh my goodness. Wow. So it looks like something in thank between. You. Ooh, yes, yeah. Thank you. Oh, that looks great. And then there's is syrup and, oh, and, and I think butter. butter. Oh, thank you, Miriam. Wow, I wish you would have told me this. I wouldn't have had any breakfast this morning. Well, consider it an early lunch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Are you going to try some topping? Sure. I'll try the blueberry. It looks somewhere Doesn't between look a, a jelly and a syrup and just tiny blueberries. And blueberries are very good for you. Oh, well, then. Someone told me high. I got a haircut yesterday and we were talking about <laughs> dementia. Uh huh. Because I don't know why we were talking about dementia. I think the barber had someone who in their family. So the barber was telling me that blueberries are good for you and help prevent uh, dementia. And oh. since I forget things easily, I said, I'm going to have to eat more blueberries. <laughs> well, there you go. Pile, <laughs> pile it high. Yeah. Join you as well. Oh, you, this is delicious. Are you, you're just going to do the blueberry, no syrup? Well, I'm going to try it just oh, with the blueberries okay. first. That's, that's probably smart. So it doesn't mess up the taste. Uh-huh. That's good. I don't need syrup. Oh, well, good. We have some fun plates here. I do BBQ. Are do we you, still on the air? Because I don't want to be chewing on the air. Oh, people People like to know that you're really eating it. It, <laughs> it makes it more authentic. So do you ever make waffles yourself? Um, yeah, I just, well, actually, not, not from scratch. I just, like, buy the box <laughs> ones and put them in the toaster. There you go. <laughs> How do these compare to the toaster ones? These are much better. <laughs> are these homemade? Uh, they came from a local restaurant. Okay. Hmm. So speaking of food, I mentioned Italian food. One of my favorite memories 
from the past 99 episodes of Truth and Charity was when we had a special guest bring in a special meal for you. This was like an epiphany, like surprise and gift. All right. Well, Bishop, we have a special surprise for you. If you'll remember back to our episode that we did around the Feast of St. Nicholas, one of the kids asked what your favorite foods was. Do you remember what your answer was? Was it olives? Well, no, Italian food, yeah. Mediterranean food. So specifically, I think you mentioned a spaghetti carbonara made with oh, egg. Oh, I do. And not carbonara cream. is the top pasta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Alex Fiato is here. He's the owner and head chef of the Italian Connection restaurant here in Fort Wayne. I've been and there. He has prepared for you a special dish. Oh my goodness. Here. Alex, thank you. Hey, you're very welcome. Good to, good to be with you, Bishop. Buon Natale. I tell you, I've got some, uh, I don't know if you're in the mood, but I brought a little vino if you'd like. Oh, my goodness. Uh, oh. I, I made you the uh, pancetta or carbonara. Authentic. Authentic. Oh, my goodness. For the staff, I made some uh, uh, bolognese or sauce, actually chicken riggies. That is oh, great. Boy. What a big surprise. Go way back, Bishop. We, Grazie. Uh, I remember. And the Eagles. I know. <laughs> Actually, we are the Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> great restaurant. And and such, a, it reminds me of Rome, yeah. you know. Homemade stuff, yeah. Very homemade, delicious. Barely. Yeah. Wow, this is a great surprise. Well, Thank you. Oh, I'll get this stuff ready, and then you guys can. Oh, what a nice yeah, surprise. We'll Thank you. I, mean, you mind, I don't know. Do you mind if we get a little bit of twine? Or? No, that's fine. No, <laughs> sure. yeah. Right. yeah, a little bit. Thank I'm not you. saying we're going to download <laughs> So a special thanks to Alex Fiato for joining us for that episode. The chef had Italian connection here in Fort Wayne. That was a lot of fun. Did it meet your expectations? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it wasn't long after that I went to the restaurant. There was a, a couple that invited me to go, uh -huh. and uh, we had a great time. The only thing is, Alex had this karaoke thing, and they made me get up. <laughs> so that was extremely embarrassing. What were you singing? But it's, I don't even, I, he had me singing Frank Sinatra songs. Uh -huh. I don't remember. <laughs> but I don't have a good voice, so it was very embarrassing. But, like, everyone made me get up. Yeah. Have you ever been in that situation? <laughs> Uh, so I'm only going back there if they guarantee that I don't have to do karaoke. Uh -huh. I, somebody sent me a picture of that, of you <laughs> up there singing karaoke. And I, I so wished that I was there for that. Maybe uh, we could do a special episode of Truth and Charity where you do some karaoke. Oh, uh, um, no, I don't think so. No. <laughs> that was Joe and Laura Wharton who took me there. So a Call shout out, out to Call Joe them. and Laura. Yeah. All right. Well, also another memorable food moment of the show was the April 24th, 2019 episode. This uh, was not about your favorite food, but about your least favorite food. Mm. Somebody asked, what is the weirdest thing you've ever eaten? I would probably say snails. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I mean, I've eaten some different weird stuff. Actually, you know, I love seafood, so I'll eat anything, all kinds of you know, I love things like clams and oysters and crabs and lobster, all that. Uh -huh. But I don't know that that's really weird. But uh, snails are weird. Calamari? Oh, I love calamari. Uh -huh. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I like it fried or just uh, fresh, raw calamari, too, as long as it's, you know, well-seasoned and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Calamari is delicious. Snails, I probably wouldn't order too much, but... I mean, I have had them. That's was that probably the in the thing. U.S. or is that France? A, France. I think it was in yeah. France. Yeah. Well, French yeah. people. Do you eat that stuff, Kyle? I'll eat anything. Really? Yeah. And in fact, when I was in high school, I got to go over to Italy and we had a short layover in Paris, France, but our, we had plane issues, ended up having to spend a day in Paris and they gave us like money to run into town, like a train voucher or whatever. I don't know. And... We had at the hotel this huge buffet and all this weird stuff that I had never tried, including snail. My goal was to try one of everything. Like, this is my chance. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, yeah. But the only time I had snail was in France. Yeah, yeah. Did you like it? Yeah. It was, it, to me, it's more the adventure than the yeah, flavor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, well, you I know, ate snail. It was more, <laughs> fun, more better than like, ooh, this is delicious. Yeah. You know, I just thought of something weirder that <laughs> okay. I ate as you're talking about that. Cause when I was a deacon, I served as a deacon in Spain for two months 
And I lived with priests. They were all retired priests, elderly men. And one day, and I didn't know much Spanish at that point. I was just learning. They were all excited because at dinner, they were having some special meal. Uh-huh. And it was tripa de caballo. Now, okay. I didn't know what that meant at uh-huh. that time. But... <laughs> Now I know it was horse tripe. Uh-huh. Well, that's the one thing I can't stand is tripe. In Rome, that tripe was a popular dish too, but uh-huh. it'd be, I guess, the insides of cows or whatever. Yeah. I don't know what animals, lamb, but I can't, I, even the texture of things like, or like a tongue. Oh, I uh, did have tongue too. Yeah. That was just disgusting. <laughs> uh, but, you know, stomachs and uh-huh. all that stuff. It's just, oh my goodness, it just turns my stomach. So anyhow, these priests are all excited and a lot of them didn't have teeth anymore. And they're, <laughs> and they're, they're enjoying this. And I yeah. tried it, yeah. not knowing what it was. And just the texture turned my stomach. Yeah. And then when I found out what it was, the insides of a horse. Right. Oh my goodness! I, it was disgusting. Uh-huh. So that really was the that weirdest. takes that, that takes that's the cake. W- more weird than than uh, snails. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. So we have for you today some breakfast tripe. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> no. Actually, coming up next, we have some pecan pancakes. So I shouldn't have eaten all those waffles. Oh, we've, we've still got three more courses, Bishop. Oh, then I'll just have to taste. One of the things that I usually do whenever I sit down with the priest, the, the first part is kind of a vocational story, uh, their discernment story. And we've talked about this in the past, but anything that stands out to you as a, a big influence or transition in your time of discernment and your vocational story, your faith journey? You mean after I was already... In the seminary? Either way. Either way. Oh, okay. Part of your, your path to where you are today. Yeah, I mean, first of all, the, the initial discernment, that was really imp- extremely important, a uh, grace-filled time. I think I've shared on the show, I was praying at the grotto of Our Lady of Lords at Mount St. Mary's when I heard the call. So I believe the Blessed Mother had a hand mm-hmm. in my saying yes to the call to the priesthood. Uh, that was very beautiful. I'd say another big turning point was when I finished two years of the seminary in the United States and was sent to Rome for theology, that was important. I mean, first of all, I was leaving everybody. I was leaving family and friends. I didn't know anybody. So I, I flew over. It was the first time I was ever on a flight. I'd huh. never been in an airplane before. But one thing that was very powerful was I did know someone, you know, Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. So hmm. that was where peace came when I would go and pray. And that was the one friend that was still with me. And so that was that was a very beautiful transition point. I would say also as a student that just the many and varied experiences I had making friends with people from different countries, other seminarians from other countries of the world, that was very broadening. And then, you know, having the opportunity to serve as a deacon in Spain, that was very enjoyable and not only learning Spanish, but learning these different cultures finding my relatives in Greece. So yeah, there's just so many great memories over there. And then, of course, the transition then to come home to be ordained. I was ordained in July 1983 and began parish ministry in York, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And that was a great two years. And then I was sent back to Rome for three more years of study. So really, when I think about those years, I was, you know, it it was very full. All right. Well, coming up, we have another breakfast item to try and more highlights in this special 100th episode of Truth and Charity with Bishop Rhodes, brought to you in part by Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. If you're a podcast listener, subscribe to Truth and Charity with Bishop Rhodes wherever you get podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. You can also find past episodes at RedeemerRadio.com slash AskBishop or in the free Redeemer Radio app.